Hi folks and welcome back to the channel and in the previous episode we painted the cabin of Old Rusty in this wine red. Now it's time to get the cabin out of the boot and start working at the underside and in the back of the cabin. We will put some protective coating on there and we'll also wax the cavities inside the sills and inside the panels that we have mounted together. So just bear with me. you have asked me how the homemade paint boot uh, performed. Well, I can tell you that it performed pretty well. As you can see, the surface is very smooth on the paint. There is no dust in it, there's no drips, there is no orange skin on it. So it really looks good. Enough about the paint boot. Right now we have to work on Old Rusty again. And we're going to do a couple of things. I'm going to protect this back panel here. On that one I'm going to spray a protective undercoating. I also will do it in the cavities on the panels in the back and at the inside of the sills we go in to inject them with wax. And then finally at the inside of the seating box and underneath the sills at the inside I'm going to paint that with uh, anti-rust paint with a brush. Uh, there's no need to paint this with an air gun or in the paint boot because this is all underneath the vehicle. Alright, so let's get on with it. As it is a habit of me to explain what I'm about to do and what products I will do, this is no exception again, guys. I'm sorry for that. So we're going to protect the cabin now with anti-rust products and I have them laid out here of what I'm going to use. Again, I'm not making a commercial for these products. I don't get them for free. I pay always cash for them, you know, the full sum. So nothing uh, is sponsored here. Uh, but I know these products and I've been using them for a while and I'm sure where you live, you have equal products. Um, Old Rusty has certain cavities, uh, cavities in between panels, the cavities in the sills. And inside, I want to protect that because rust often comes from the inside. And therefore, I'm going to inject some liquid wax. This is the liquid wax. It is a bit difficult sometimes to get inside the cavities, but that's why you might have to drill a hole and then, you know, fill up the hole with a little tap, rubber tap afterwards. And once you have the hole in, in the panel or where the cavities are, then you can use a system like this. This is like almost like a one meter long spray hose and you can stick it inside the cavity and then the wax will spray out this part. So you get a long uh, stretch inside a sill for instance and that's what I'm going to use. Of course the can fits onto the gun like that. The second treatment is to spray the back panel of the cabin, the panel that is not painted in wine red, with a undercoating product. This is the undercoating product. It's called anti-gravel. It's typically the kind of stuff that you spray inside your wheel arches. It becomes pretty hard but still is elastic and it also has a tendency to dampen the sound a bit. So it's a good sound insulation as well. So I'm going to spray that on there. For that I'm going to use my other gun. This is my old gun. Um, you can see it's really worn out. And At the underside of Old Rusty and inside the seating box I didn't spray everything uh, with the nice paint because that's a waste of money and a waste of uh, effort. So that I'm going to paint with a rust, anti-rust paint which I have here with the good old traditional brush. This is a quite handy uh, masking system. Uh, it's a piece of plastic which you can fold open and the sticky tape is already on the top because I always have issues taping plastic onto a body and this is very helpful, it's fast. Of course it's a bit more expensive but it's very useful. The cabin is masked off and now we can paint the back side and the top of the cabin. And for that I'm going to use this anti-gravel, but you've got to shake it well before you use it. There's a seal inside. Before you hook up the air hose, make sure that the pressure is no more than 2 kilograms or 2.5 kilograms. We 
we sprayed the back of the cabin and we also sprayed the rooftop. So now it's about time to start working with the wax where we're gonna inject wax in all the cavities. But first of all, I'm gonna have my lunch. And the waxing tool has this very fine nozzle that will spray out in a big fan the wax inside the cavities. So now we're going to inject some wax into the sill and I drilled a hole over here so I can inject this long uh, tube in there and hopefully I can get all the way to the front. And we just inject it. And now we just plug it up with a small little grommet. The next thing to do on this cabin is to put an elastic seam all along this edge here and then we will paint it with a protective paint. It's not very comfortable under the car but it works. Again. That side was already done before so there's nothing to be done here. And we'll have to seal this area up because that is another area which we haven't sealed so far. And the last thing we're going to do is to paint the inner sills with a rust protection paint. And this does not have to be pretty because that is all at the underside of the cabin. I'm going to continue to paint the whole bottom of the car, but I won't keep you guys busy with this because this is going to become a bit boring. So folks, we're nearing the end of this video and the cabin is now completely finished in terms of painting and rust protection at the underside, the back panel and of course the paint. So the next thing we're going to do is to start working on the doors and try to get the glazing in there. But first of all, I need to ask you all a question and please uh, if you could fill in the poll, I would really appreciate it. And the question is as follows. Do I go for an overhaul of the engine and then put it all back to Old Rusty as it was original? Or I fully electrify Old Rusty with a DC motor and Tesla batteries? Both have advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the old gasoline engine is a bit of an issue for emission control nowadays where I live. Uh, you are banned out of cities and so on. But okay, that's not a big deal because it's an old timer. But it has a lot of other aspects that I need to consider while rebuilding it. First of all, it's a total overhaul of that engine. Secondly, I need to work on the starter motor. I need to get an alternator or dynamo sorted out. I need to get the carburetor done. I also will need the radiator done, you know, the water pump. All these things have to be fixed and have to be repaired. Now that is a lot of work and I still am going to end up with 35 horsepower on that engine because it's only a small 2 liter 35 horsepower engine, not a lot for this truck. And then I also have an issue with the gearbox. I have to recondition maybe the full gearbox and, and I need to get a new clutch and all that. So all hard parts to get. If I stick with the electrical motor then a lot of these things go away. I don't have to worry about a gas tank. I don't need to worry about a fuel pump. I don't need to worry about all the things I just mentioned before. I can have a direct drive so the shaft of the motor can go straight with a connect piece to the, the shaft of the gearbox. And I will keep the gearbox. I don't need the clutch. So uh, it's something to think about. The old engine is of course going to make it all original and authentic. The electrical motor will make it no longer authentic, but 
it has a lot of advantages as well. And I got a lot more power out of it. I, I would go for a 90 horsepower electrical motor. Um, that would be good enough for this truck. So all by all, it's a difficult choice. So you guys uh, advise me. I'm looking forward to what you're going to vote. Bye-bye.